Good morning, everybody. Uh, we start here one of the last uh, sessions in our training path. And uh, as uh, we announced, uh, in this session, we are going to deal with what we call uh, generically, from a generic point of view, uh, the psychological support to traumatized people. Now, of course, the problem is that the psychological support must be provided uh, by, um, by a doctor, by a psychologist or, or, or a, a psych a psychiatric expert, which probably none of you is really is. And of course, in three or four hours, there's no way you can become an expert. So we asked uh, Dr. Francesca Pidone, who is an expert and does that on her everyday life, to give us some hints. Okay, we have another person joining. Uh, to give you uh, some hints on how to deal, how to treat with uh, traumatized people. So uh, we have two sessions of one and a half hour. One is today and the other one will be uh, one week from now on the 9th of, uh, of February. So uh, Francesca, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, you can start. Okay, uh, good morning to everybody. I am uh, uh, give you. I'll give you a little presentation of myself. I'm a counselor and I have a, a two degree: one in law and one in psychology, and uh, a master in criminology. And my three area of working uh, are um, this, the following. Uh, I'm a counselor uh, and the coordinator of helpline uh, Telefono Donna in Pisa, is a domestic violence center, and I work with uh, women and children victims of abuse and domestic violence. And uh, another area for me is uh, um, the uh, work with, uh, as a law lay judge in uh, surveillance court. And uh, uh, I'm working with uh, uh, person, women and men, uh, who is inside prison. So in uh, traumatizing context, uh, person who has commit uh, crimes, but uh, are inside a, a situation um, that is traumatizing. And the third uh, area of my interest is uh, um, cooperate, international cooperation, because I did some missions in Albania, in Argentina and the Palestinian territories and the Gaza Strip, to support uh, women's group uh, um, and anti-violence center. So I deal with highly traumatized person in my uh, working area. First of all, I want uh, uh, to, um, and to give you some uh, um, stages, uh, uh, some in information about uh, today. Today we um, follow four stages uh, in this uh, uh, first training. Um, an introductory session, and the second stage where I focus on definition of trauma, typologies of traumatic events and type of trauma. A third about trauma response, and a fourth about post traumatic, what is it? I ask you to interact with me because uh, um, uh, it's important. Uh, uh, also, be, um, if uh, you aren't an expert and you have to uh, not do a treatment, a psychological treatment to um, people. In, but you have to uh, understand in depth some important definition and concept to understand why um, of some behaviors. Okay, start with um, this. Uh, let's start with some few certainty, certainties. 
In the last 25 years, the trauma studies uh, developing a lot. Mm -hmm. um, both uh, the side of typology of traumas, uh, but also the technique of uh, treating trauma. I think that is important uh, um, for all service uh, to be a trauma sensitive, sensitive because uh, sometimes also with the vulnerability groups of people, we um, make uh, the we re uh, traumatizing and re victimizing people. Uh, not with intentional uh, intentionality, but uh, um, it's a very uh, dangerous uh, to uh, be in a relationship with uh, vulnerability vulnerable group of people uh, without uh, uh, knowing the basic, uh, the ABC, the basic of trauma. So our aims uh, are to be training nature of trauma, assessment process, and be comfortable working with behaviors related to trauma. Mm. First of all, we have to, um, I give you some exercise to do now, mm, all together with me. Allora, I, I think, uh, about an area of your life, work, business, personal development, family, social, spiritual health. You can see a wheel with six area, with six basic area of our life, mm -hmm. uh, spiritual, religious, family and uh, love uh, um, area, business uh, as a, and work, uh, social, health and personal development. Please choose three of the most important for you in this moment uh, and put the three in order to importance. Now, have you done it? Okay, now think an event, a negative, unpredictable event can, that can affect these areas and write down three words and please keep the note with you. We don't have to show now the three words connected to the three areas, but you have to keep the note with you and after we talk about it. Are you ready? If you give, if you say yes, I can go on. Yes, ready, Francesca. Okay. 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 Let's go. Ready. Okay, the word trauma. Trauma comes from the Greek word und. The American Psychological Association defined psychological trauma an emotional response to a terrible event such as a rape, violence, war, natural disaster. Psychological trauma is not an event it is an individual response to an event, and this is important to keep on mind because maybe it's not abnormal the person, but abnormal is the event. 
also if the person can um, have some manifestation uh, that you can consider abnormal or pathologic, but abnormal is the event. Psychological trauma can be defined as a person unique experience of an event in which their ability to integrate the emotional experience is overwhelming or the experience a treat to their life, body in, bodily integra integrity and emotional stability. Mm. So uh, traumatic events uh, are different and uh, are, have many dimensions dimension of trauma of magnitude, complexity, frequency, frequency, duration, predictability, and controllability. So uh, we have to um, keep in mind uh, all these dimensions to understand also the um, dysfunction of the person because uh, um, the question is now, are we psychological prepared? For every physical injury, there are maybe B, five, six psychological injuries. This means that I can see the trauma of the person. I can see the manifestation, the consequence, but not the trauma of the person, the psychological trauma. And maybe um, now we are talking uh, together and uh, a lot of person has uh, a trauma tick experience in, the, in his history. So we have to understand also that we can have uh, a critical incident in life that is posture to a traumatic event in which both of the following or were present. The person experienced witnesses or was confronted with an event or events that involve actual or threatening death or serious injuries of um, or a threat of a walk of self of others. The person's response involves intensive fear, helplessness, or horror. There, is, uh, there are coping mechanisms. So, um, in our experiences, uh, survivors of uh, uh, trauma um, try to manage the trauma with some mechanism inside uh, that um, are, uh, rely on past strategies. So it's not true that we don't have the strategy to cope with the trauma. We have, because sometimes uh, in our life, uh, we, we, we face up with a stressful situation. So we uh, make a, a sort of storage where we put the strategies to cope with the stressful situation. Maybe past coping mechanism can be functional or dysfunctional. Could be um, a strategy that works or not. It's interesting to underline that the degree of hardness, the resilience, can, can be identified a characteristic that can reduce, reduce extreme stress in old population. So we think that the, 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 the old population can be weak, uh, weaker than the young, but it's not so because they have a, a sort of storage of, of multiplicity strategies. So can uh, have a, a high degree of hardness, of resilience. 
Instead, children can be vulnerable because they have less experience or known patterns of action as a response to this, this experience. So we have to, um, to understand to the, the, the construction to meet is that uh, the old population is uh, weaker and the children are more um, resistance, resilience. Traumatic experience, uh, uh, this is a, a list, uh, open list of uh, traumatic experience. Uh, uh, disaster, natural disaster, war, torture, accidents, terrorism, abuse, neglect. Remember that abuse can be um, in is a, a, a very um, important uh, traumatic uh, experience and uh, um, for my uh, professional uh, um, position, I can uh, give you the, the, the one certain that uh, in uh, one out of three women the war in life have, <clears throat> has an experience of violence, uh, of male violence. Uh, male violence can be inside the relationship, but can be also inside the family. Mm and uh, uh, sexual uh, abuse uh, is uh, more common than we can uh, believe. Mm. Neglect uh, is another uh, traumatic experience uh, that we can find in the childhood uh, adversive event and uh, um, uh, also if you can see this uh, phenomenon from some privilege observatory, you see also uh, the, the, the quantity of this phenomenon. You have to remember that individual trauma is different from collective trauma. Now we have a collective trauma that is a COVID. So um, collective trauma, mm, needs a specific uh, um, anal analysis because uh, is uh, a traumatic psychological um, effect shared by a group of people of any sites up and including an entire society. So um, it could play a role in a group identity formation, and it is important a social construction of meaning. Why is important uh, um, to construct uh, uh, a meaning for traumatic experience? Uh, I am working with uh, um, women, uh, I think, uh, from uh, 202 and uh, what can I learn from uh, this uh, is that uh, you if you leave uh, violence uh, any form of violence you need uh, to give a meaning of this experience and if is a situation that uh, is not individual, but is uh, um, regarding a group of person, it's paradoxical, in a paradoxical way, uh, easier the, the, the level of the construction of the meaning. So I think about uh, um, vulnerability, vulnerable groups and uh, the, the possibility to speak out and to nominate the traumatic experience uh, and to give a name of what they are um, lived. And so uh, it's uh, uh, maybe easier the construction of the meaning of the social meaning of the 
this uh, collective trauma. We talk about first uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, our Zoom, uh, we share uh, information about uh, the situation of COVID in our country because, because uh, uh, trauma, uh, COVID is a trauma, a collective trauma, but uh, we are at the, the same level, at the same situation, at we, at, at we can share information, details, feelings uh, in an easier way instead of individual trauma. Also, we have to understand all that uh, it could involve more than one generation. So we have to be careful about uh, the intergeneration harm and damages of a collective trauma. And one person, one life can have more traumas, individual trauma, and collective trauma. Now, what uh, are the types of, uh, what different types of trauma uh, do we, we know? Uh, we have a acute or simple trauma. is a response to one-off experience such as a car accident. If it's a simple traum trauma, it doesn't mean that it has a less consequence on the life of the person. It could be only a trauma, but can this trauma um, have an effect, a terrible effect in all the areas of the life, areas of the person. So be careful. Uh, to the to say it's only a trauma. Mm. After we have a chronic trauma that is typical caused by prolonged experiences of harm, which are repeated or mul mul multiple. And the complex trauma also arises from prolonged harm and is usually considered to involve specific elements, including betrayal and harm from caregiver early in life. Um, a complex trauma is uh, um, so uh, radicated in the identity of the person as in a collective trauma that uh, it's uh, um, so um, it's a necessary a long uh, psychotherapy um, to uh, manage the consequences of this trauma because uh, the first maybe in the first uh, relationship of your life uh, that with uh, your mother with your father with all will with the all caregivers can uh, be um, pathologic. And this, uh, uh, I think about uh, sexual abuse in the childhood or neglect in the childhood. And you uh, have, uh, a, a, in, in, in the, you are in the possibility to construct the sense of trust in the world. So it's very um, difficult to recognize it, to, mm, to mm, uh, treat. Okay, uh, this is a, a, some, some, <laughs> some comics about uh, uh, different type of traumas. Acute trauma, one incident, chronic trauma repeats over time, complex trauma, varied events. Okay, some consequences of trauma. Trauma, this, this, the, the more import, the, the, the important consequence uh, or, or the more visible consequence of trauma is inability to trust. Mm -hmm. Inability to trust, uh, and this is, a, is a, an indicator. And the other indicator is low self-esteem. 
but also we have a feeling as guilty, pain, fear, anger, shame. And these are in the so normal sphere, so normal color. But after this, uh, there are a lot of pathological form uh, the, of the consequence of trauma, depression, PTSD, nightmare, sexual problems, self-harm, phobias, violence, eating, order, eating disorder, compulsory behavior, anxiety. So I ask this to you, Re take the note of the three words you have written before. And please uh, show us Someone, can you sh show the what uh, is written before? Okay, there is someone uh, uh, can do uh, the icebreaker. Okay, don't worry. Oh, yes. Fear, okay. And the other words. Shame. Pain. Fear, pain, shame. And your pain, ability, trust. Another one. Okay. Love, self esteem. Okay. Guilty, low self-esteem, okay. What is for you the most difficult to manage of these feelings? Shame, fear. Inability, trust, fear. The most difficult law of self-esteem. You cannot control fear. Okay, and fear as well, okay. And fear as well, because fear is very powerful. Okay. These are feelings so powerful, you are right. And the fear is very powerful. And these are feelings, are universal feelings. I can um, be touched by guilty pain of other person. So it's important to 
understand, to try to understand, because it's not easy to understand what is the most difficult, the, 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 the feeling with I have some uh, difficulties to manage. For me, is a inability is a fear, but also inability trust. Because if you don't have trust in the world, in others, it's impossible to create a common sense of life and socialize. So it's very hard, um, hard obstacle for me to work with. Uh, uh, women and uh, uh, people with uh, this uh, uh, tra tra with the traumatized traumatized uh, traumatized people because inability of trust that you have you you also have a lot of paranoic uh, um, view of life because uh, uh, it, all uh, are enemies so it's uh, difficult to to manage to manage. Okay, uh, what about loss and grief? Because uh, if you deal with uh, highly traumatized uh, people, you have to be, <laughs> be um, ready to uh, face up with uh, loss and grief. Uh, and the pain of loss and grief. A traumatic event may be involved in tangible loss, loss of loved ones, home, material good, employment, income, and also intangible loss. Loss of safety, security, social connection, cohesion, dignity, trust, Positive self-image, self-esteem, control. Try to un, to to put in uh, on the on the shoes of the um, vulnerable group of people who have lost uh, totally the control of their life. How do you feel uh, the, when uh, you lost control of your life of everything? You lost also trust in the future and hope. And so uh, the, 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 you, you lost the gasoline to the motivation to, to go around the world. The tra traumatic experiences of refugees. Um, this uh, question is very difficult to me. When, uh, just one more. When you ask which one of the most severe, the world all severe, the world all unpleasant things, you didn't give me a very good measurement to measure this. Uh, a Kurdish woman, this is a, a, a sentence of a um, Kurdish woman. We have. Um, also here understand that there are some traumatic event before be forced it to flee for the refugees. Imprisonment, loss of property, torture, physical assault, and trauma correlate, related to the flight process, separation from family, witness of killing or torture, rob it, force it to inflict pain or kill, and also post-migration stress. So we have a pre-traumatic experience, a uh, stressful or traumatic experience during the flight process, and the post-migration stress. The post-migration stress about re-establishing a home, a new identity, adapting to a new place and a language under certain circumstances. Oh. Uh, the host of, uh... Sorry? I 
à l'instant. Ok. Sorry. So, it is important to avoid the re-traumatization or re-victimization when we do some activities with the vulnerable groups of people, refugees or uh, seekers for asylum. Mm -hmm. Have you got have you any question, any comment? Okay. This help has to um have some suggestions uh, uh, in the relationship with high highly traumatized people. Mm? And uh, it's something that we have to follow or to try to follow in uh, to protect also ourselves because uh, also uh, the person who uh, are in relationship are in danger to be traumatized by uh, the, 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 uh, this uh, uh, exposure to a, the trauma, traumatized people. So uh, the importance of space. We have a space to allow time for the survivor to calm down and take perspective. Trauma survivors often, very often, uh, have difficulty regulating emotions and take longer to calm down. Predictability. Everyone loves surprise, not. Trauma survivors often prefer predictability because they feel safer. Perspective. Be aware when past is intruding into present. Don't take responsibility for what is not yours gently. Recalibration. Read over reaction, over sensitive or over anything from your vocabulary. Attribution. Don't refer to the person's upbringing problem, issues, behavior. Call it for what is it, trauma. Recipro reciprocity. Give what you also need to receive, listening, empathy, and empowerment. Support, be kind, loving, passion, but empathetic, set limits. You have needs too. Choice. It can be a big trigger when a survivor is denied choice and control. Comfort. Collaborate and cooperate. Okay. The importance don't, to the perspective. Don't take responsibility for what is not yours. Gently. Um, this is important as uh, the, the support, uh, but support with uh, some boundaries. You have to put boundaries uh, in the relationship to protect yourself. It's not egoistic uh, um, choice, it's uh, a um, healthy cho choice. Okay, this is a, a model important, the three new brain is a model and the explanation of um, emotions and the reaction of uh, what the, the reaction of the, um, the reaction to a trauma. Mm -hmm. Uh, I give you uh, very simple information um, and uh, uh, to, to um, understand the uh, 
flight, fight, uh, and the freeze reaction to trauma. Very important. If, uh, if you um, don't understand some uh, abnormal manifestation of the behavior of traumatized people. So um, we have three different uh, brain. This is a reptilian brain, the brain stem. The reptilian brain is the oldest part of our brain. Brain stem is the posterior part of the brain at the continuous of spinal cord. You can see from this is this one, reptilian, the white part of the brain. And uh, is important because it is responsible for body's vital functions such as, such as sleeping, eating, regulating temperature, heart rate and balance. The reptilian brain is reliable but tends to be somewhat rigid and compulsive. Remember the reptilian brain because uh, is reliable also of the two um, reaction of the trauma. After we have the limbic brain, the limbic brain and the limbic system emerge in the first mammals. The main structure of the limbic brain are the hippocampus, the amygdala and the hypothalamus. The limbic system is involved in emotions, motivation, behavior and long-term memory. The limbic brain is the set of the value judgments that we make, often unconsciously, that exert such a strong influence on our behavior. After we have the cortex, the cortex is the outer layer of the brain, I give you the first is the orange one, and the limbic is in the middle, like you, as you can see, the, the yellow. And the cortex, uh, it assumes importance in primates and culminates the human brain with two large cerebral hemispheres. It is uh, the human part of the brain uh, it is responsible for our um, functions uh, as a language, thoughts, perception, self-awareness and consciousness. The cortex plays also a key role in coordinating central nervous system and the function of memory. After the three, uh, the three part of brain. We have also a prefrontal cortex, is an executive function part of the brain, and it is involved in activities such as linking cause and effect, plan the for future, set goals, thinking about consequence, and it is responsible for moderate social behavior. Okay, what happens um, when uh, we have a, a life treating situation? What are brain, the brain and body response? Okay, in dangerous situation, active, uh, uh, active uh, the limbic system and amygdala gives alarms. Adrenaline is released from the adrenal glands situated above the kidneys and also cortisol. Red blood cells flood the, to carry oxygen. Breathing becomes faster to provide more energy. The heart beats speed up. Our blood pressure go up, more, more bad blood and the muscle in, uh, to the muscles in readiness to run away or to defend ourselves. Skin becomes pale or flushed, dilatation of pupils, and the brain feels foggy, 
unable to focus on anything but fighting or fleeing. So uh, in this uh, picture, you can see the fight or flight response. There is a treat, an attack, an armor fall, event or treat to survival, brain process the signal beginning we in a, in a, in the amygdala and the hippocampus so in the with the third brain this, the, um, and after there is a cortisol adrenaline release with the physical left uh, heart rate increase shaking dilated pupils dry mount and uh, we have the two reactions, fight or flight. Fight, stand your ground, defend your position, attack. Or flight, give away, retreat, discard, remove yourself, give up, give up and move on. There are two typical uh, responses to the dangerous situation, but also to the trauma. Okay, fight or flight is supposed to work for us, not against us. We have all this system in a normal condition. Uh, after become, uh, after if there is a, a big traumatic event or uh, there is something that uh, is prolonged that uh, can can many, can uh, involve in pathologic situation but the flight or flight response is work for us to defend us from the external the fight or flight response response was originally described by American psychologist Bradford Cannon in the book Badly Changes in Pain, Hunger, Fear and Rage. The psychological responses associated with fight or flight can play a critical role in surviving truly treating situation. And we have a third response, very delicate to talk about, and is the freezing response. Freezing is an automatic involuntary response to a treat. The brain decides that freezing, rather than fighting or running away, is the best way to survive what's happening. Sometimes when they freeze, people dissociate and feel like they are watching themselves from outside their own body or their body, or their body may go rigid or limp so they, can move, they can't move. Um, some people of you are uh, journalists who are involved in communication mass media. And uh, I want to underline for them something. When, uh, they, when there is uh, uh, an article or a report about uh, a sexual violence, sometimes uh, we, uh, we find uh, sentences uh, as uh, the victim uh, was uh, um, uh, blocked, was shocked, uh, was, uh, um, she doesn't uh, uh, try to um, fight, she doesn't try to rebel from the violence, not because uh, she gives consent, to the violence, but because the, she is uh, dissociated and feel like, uh, uh, like um, a, 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 a dissociation from her body is too painful to, 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 to feel uh, body and emotions that I dissociate. This is a, a way of protecting uh, herself 
But sometimes, if you read a uh, journal uh, or if you listen uh, um, TV in reporting this uh, uh, news about uh, sexual violence, sexual crime, seems to be that she uh, don't, uh, she doesn't react. So um, in in a, in a certain way, uh, she is uh, um, she she give consent to the violence. Uh, is important so the uh, trauma sensitive culture and to share this information be because this is a mechanism, a brain mechanism, a bodily uh, responses to a danger and uh, all of us. Uh, as uh, um, have this uh, kind of response. Okay, even though freezing is a common response to trauma, it's not as well known as a flight or fight, as a fight or flight. And this is a big problem. It means that people who um, freeze in the moment, uh, often blame themselves for what that happened. What did I fight back? Why didn't I run away? So think about uh, the re-victimization re and re-traumatization. Because if I'm a victim of domestic of uh, sexual violence, and uh, I in that moment uh, I, the re uh, I uh, dissociated. Uh, uh, myself uh, and I have a dissociation uh, between uh, the body and uh, the, the mind. Uh, and uh, I um, read uh, this article or I listen in the, the, the common uh, um, the comment, uh, the common comment from uh, people. I can think uh, why I didn't uh, I didn't run away, uh, why I didn't. Uh, uh, I fight, why didn't I fight back? So there is a, a re-victimization, re a re-traumatization. So um, the words are so important and so powerful because it's all, it, you, you are right when you say uh, that uh, fear is powerful, but also the, 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 the words. Uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sense or in another is a powerful the word uh, uh, when you name the trauma because the trauma is not a taboo but uh, is powerful also in the other sense of re-victimization or re-traumatization. Um, from the freezing response to post-traumatic, freezing response is the most dangerous response. It obstructs any reaction, leaving the victim motionless and unable to respond at all. I can lead directly to post-traumatic stress. It can lead directly to post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, before this, uh, I want to uh, um, show uh, a, uh, I don't know, okay, this uh, um, interesting, uh, uh, it's a short, it's about uh, five minutes, uh, about uh, a, a summary of what we say um, uh, till now. Trying to push from the bottom up. Oh, sorry. The brain develops from the bottom up. The first thing to develop is the brain stem or the reptilian brain, as some people might call it. This area is responsible for our bodily functions. It tells us when to regulate our temperature, when to sleep and when to eat. The next important part of our brains to develop is the limbic system, or what some people might call the mammalian part of the brain. The limbic system supports a variety of functions, including emotion, behavior, motivation, and long-term memory. The next part of the brain to develop is the cortex, which is the outer layer of the brain. This is sometimes considered the human part 
because humans are one of the only mammals that develop this part of the brain. This part of the brain is responsible for how we as humans were able to develop language, have thoughts, self-awareness, perception and consciousness. Also, the cortex plays a key role in integrating the central nervous system and functions of memory. The last and most advanced part of the brain to develop is the prefrontal cortex, which is considered the executive functioning part of the brain. For some people, this part doesn't fully develop until they're in their mid to late 20s. The prefrontal cortex helps us to think through cause and effect, the ability to plan for the future, set goals, and understand the consequences of our actions. It's also responsible for the ability to moderate social behavior. When we're in a stressful situation, part of our limbic system called the amygdala sets off an alarm bell response to let us know we're in danger and we need to do something about it. When this happens, the brain floods with a hormone called cortisol, so the body knows that something needs to be done. The most common responses to a stressful or dangerous situation are some you might be familiar with. Fight, flight, freeze, or submit. This is an inbuilt system of survival to keep us safe when we're in danger. Like when our ancestors might have had to decide whether to stand their ground and fight against a large predator or run away. A stress response is a healthy, normal part of being a human. It lets us know that our bodies are working and keeping us safe. If a person is exposed to a highly stressful or traumatic event, or they have continual exposure to stressful events like abuse or neglect, their alarm system might become overactive. It might be always switched on as if there was a risk of danger or threat at all times. For a child, this might affect how their brain develops. This is especially the case if it's in the context of stress or trauma events by a primary caregiver. In these cases, the child might develop an understanding of the world as an unsafe and dangerous place, even when they are in a safe situation. Sometimes this is called hypervigilance. It means being on edge or aware of danger at all times. Being exposed to stressful and traumatic events on a regular basis can also have a significant impact on neural connections in the memory center. It can even change the way we remember actual events. People use alcohol and other drugs for a variety of reasons. When someone's experienced trauma, they might be in a constant state of fight or flight, and so might use substances to help move them out of their stress response state. We also know that substance use can affect the way that our brain functions. Chemicals from substances cross the blood-brain barrier and can either stimulate or depress different parts of the central nervous system, affecting how the person feels, thinks, and acts. Similar to cortisol flooding the brain in the stress response, chemicals from alcohol and other drugs can also affect neural pathways and the way the person might make decisions or remember events. Luckily, neural pathways have the lifelong ability to form and change. You might have heard this referred to as neural plasticity. Through developing a better understanding of the brain and the way trauma and alcohol and other drugs affect neural pathways, clients can be better informed and empowered. This is an intervention itself called psychoeducation. As uh, you can see, um, normal mechanism can be, become pathologic and we have to be careful uh, and know this mechanism in a very simple way as uh, the, uh, the, 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 the video, the short video. The last uh, stage of today is uh, post-traumatic because a group of vulnerable people can, um, can have some post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, it, it, it's frequently and we have to know um, to detect uh, some uh, pattern of behavior that could be abnormal uh, for us. The post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, is a disorder that can develop after a person is exposed to traumatic event. We have four kinds of symptoms. Re 
experiencing symptoms, flashbacks, relieving the trauma over and over, including physical symptoms like a racing heart, bad dreams, frightening thoughts. The flashbacks are very uh, frequent. Um, I remember a woman um, and uh, she uh, had these flashbacks while uh, she was doing uh, uh, the normal and daily uh, activity. And if you see uh, air from uh, uh, an external point of view, you don't, uh, uh, you couldn't understand why she blocked it uh, and she uh, thinking of other. It, it seems to be uh, that she don't, uh, she didn't follow it, the plane, she didn't uh, uh, maybe understand uh, and she has a cognitive problem, but it's not so. Is the problem that uh, the flashbacks paralyzed her uh, and she relieving in that moment the trauma. So she was uh, in front of me, but uh, in reality, she was uh, at the time of the trauma. Another um, kind of symptoms are avoidance, avoidance symptoms. Stay away from places, events, or objects that are reminders of the traumatic experience. Uh, we try to avoid because it's painful uh, to see, uh, I don't know, if uh, uh, during uh, a, an assault, uh, I was uh, um, on the floor and uh, I see uh, something, I don't know, the, a, a, a peculiar chair while I was dissociated. Uh, um, I uh, maybe, uh, for me, this object is a trigger of the relieving the, the trauma, the flashbacks. And so I avoid. Uh, to uh, the, the, this object, the, the chair, or uh, I try to, uh, a, a, to, to, a, uh, to avoid a peculiar the kind of uh, type of chairs. And this is what I stay uh, now. Uh, I remember uh, the, the, the stories of some women uh, uh, and some people I uh, follow. Okay, a third uh, uh, symptoms is arousal and reactivity symptoms. Mm. Uh, in uh, uh, people affected of uh, um, post-traumatic uh, syndrome uh, stress disorder, uh, they, uh, there is always uh, uh, a feeling of tense or, uh, or need or having difficulty sleeping, maybe because they are starting sleeping and uh, uh, they are, uh, they, they, there is a nightmare, so there is a, a flashback. So um, they are uh, the hypervigilant, vigilant, the hypervigilant of the short uh, um, video. Uh, in, in this uh, kind of uh, um, person could be uh, reactivity, mm. reactive the, 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 the tension. And the further is the cognition and um, mood symptoms, uh, trouble remembering, remembering key features of the traumatic event, negative thoughts about oneself of the world, distorted feeling like guilt or blame, loss of interest in enjoyable activities. You lost the, the, the love of life. Okay. Now, this is, I give you uh, a list, a checklist of PTSD uh, symptoms. Um, you can read uh, hypervigilant, uh, experience fear, anxiety, depression, numbing pain, nightmares, uh, uh, 
uh, loss of self-esteem. So it's a long list uh, um, and uh, um, there are um, a lot of uh, symptoms. Okay, some suggestion for this first part of our training. I uh, invite you, you to do not look only the weakness. The disease, there is the weakness, the disease, the pain, but uh, you uh, should concentrate on the survivors. If that person is in front of you, he, she, has done a good travel to live and has good abilities. Uh, survivors of traumatic experiences uh, are uh, as a part of strong abilities and uh, competencies. In the relationship with him or her, there is an equality of position because uh, maybe uh, if we talk about a vulnerable group of persons or uh, refugees uh, or uh, seeker for as of asylum uh, or migrants people, um, we are not at the same level because uh, we, we are in our country, we, we speak our lingua, language, uh, we uh, are in our culture and in front of you, you have a person who um, doesn't decide to uh, be uh, where he or she is. So you have to be careful to do not abuse it of your position, your comfort and power in sense, in, 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 the, in the strict meaning of uh, uh, the word power in the power position. Mm. The meeting with uh, an, a, another person can change yourself. And we have to think always, how has he, she changed you, me? So I give you some homeworks of if you want, maybe we we can talk now in the, the last 10, 12 minutes we have. Okay, I ask you two questions, two simple questions, and is, which is the most common emerged traumatic event in your activity with vulnerable people, groups? And related to this, traumatic event from one minimum to 10 maximum. How much do I feel comfort with it? So if you uh, want to answer. Okay, start. Yeah, I can share something if uh, you want. Yes. And yeah, um, uh, it happened to me that uh, during some uh, focus groups with the uh, girls uh, who have been uh, a victim of, of violence, of gender-based violence, they, they, they start maybe, uh, also we were talking about uh, something else, maybe uh, something about uh, how to improve uh, employability skills or uh, something like, like this, that they, they start uh, some disclosure. So they, they start also talking about some traumatic experience they, they had. And the most common ones was um, that the victims of gender-based violence had already uh, lived with, the, for example, the father uh, who was abusing uh, the mother. And again, the, uh, later in their life, they uh, were also abused by husband or partners. So I think this is the most common traumatic event I have heard from, from them. And I, I, I was not feeling comfort uh, at all listening to, to this. I didn't know how to react. Um, yeah. So, so minimum. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you. Adar. So double violence, uh, because uh, the violence uh, as a child, uh, as a girl, a child uh, witness violence uh, to, to the mother and uh, the violence in the, re in the relationship with a partner. The same happened to me uh, but during uh, an individual conversation, so an, an individual um, interview with a woman, um, and she shared with me her experience of rape and domestic violence in the country of, of, of origin. Um, so he started uh, talking about this, this trauma. Um, and uh, as you can imagine, I, I was not uh, comfortable with it. So uh, yeah, one, <laughs> the minimum. You don't really know what to do, what to, how to deal with the situation, how to help her. Uh, maybe just stay quiet. Uh, yeah, I really didn't know what to do. So. And it's, I also have a question about about it, about victimization and re-victimization. Um, I'm is also I'm interesting in best practices or um, if you have any suggestions on concerning how to to deal with highly traumatized traumatized persons and how to avoid a stressful situation from occurring or how to help um, these this people. Um, I know that doesn't exist a kind of list of do's and don'ts uh, or general rules. Um, I'm just asking your, uh, your opinion according, and so um, uh, according to your experience, how can we deal with this uh, trauma or any traumatized people? Thank you. Okay, the next uh, training is a uh, focus on uh, what to, to do or don't. But uh, I, I give you an, an, a, a rapid answer, say that uh, um, it's important uh, uh, that you can uh, um, give the other the idea that you are ready to uh, to listening to the violence uh, because uh, um, if uh, you uh, are ready to um, listening what uh, she she's lived means that uh, is the is not the only one is not the, the unique victim, is, is, but there is uh, uh, something that uh, it happens in the life of women. And so the shame, uh, uh, the fear, the, the sense of guilty can be uh, started to be managed. If you say, oh, uh, this happens sometimes, uh, to the women uh, is something that uh, is, a, is a simple sentence, very simple, it's a very simple but important for the others because you are not the only, you, t you live that you are the only one. This is a, the, the unique of this, the experience of violence uh, is something that uh, um, is a very stigma for uh, a victim of violence. But if uh, someone uh, reflect that, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry because it, it really it, it, the, the, the feeling of the listener uh, it, it can be uh, uh, can be full of pain uh, of fear. You can feel what uh, she is feeling, but uh, also you can uh, um, mirror, remirror, and say, "Okay, it's not the only one." 
and just, and just uh, you name uh, the violence. Uh, you remember uh, in uh, the important uh, of the, I just see you, this uh, attribution, call it for what is it, trauma, trauma, uh, violence, uh, war, uh, um, is important, is not a taboo. It's important to speak out of this and the message is i can listen you i can uh, stay with you when you talk about this okay other Other condivide, sharing. Yeah, if you want, I can share, Francesca. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here in Spain, we work in uh, employability training with the sub-Saharan women, and uh, uh, these ladies, many of them have uh, suffered physical and psychological violence, and. Um, uh, some have uh, suffered also rape and uh, even human trafficking and uh, many of them have been in the Libyan camps for months or even some of them for two years. So uh, they have quite difficult traumatic situation they have experienced and uh, uh, what we have realized that they have problems with the motivation. Or we don't know very well how to how to foster the motivation towards the employability, because I can also see there is a, an issue with the self esteem. So uh, how could we foster this? So maybe this is something you're gonna teach us next week, and I really look forward to this. But I just wanted to say that we have problems uh, motivating them, and uh, we have persons who do mentoring, follow up, and. Uh, we have listened to them, uh, their life stories, but still, uh, because there are many people giving the training, so the, when the new trainers, when they come in, um, there are always things to explain about their situation, what is the condition, how is the trajectory or, and vicissitudes of these ladies. And uh, now I understand better how this um, trauma causes uh, low motivation and self-esteem, but I'm not quite sure how we could we improve to do something about this. Okay, I give you a rapid answer. Okay. Um, uh, remember this, you don't look only the weakness, uh, the disease, mm -hmm. but uh, concentrate on the survivors. Yes. Because uh, sometimes uh, um, women, in this case, uh, we talk about women, um, of trafficking women, uh, refugees, uh, uh, maybe uh, focused only with the traumatic experience. Uh, and uh, as uh, the, uh, we can see before, uh, they had an image, uh, a, a, a self uh, uh, Im image of uh, herself, their self not so strong. Maybe you can say, uh, if you are here, you are survivors, you are a strong person, you have a strong competency, you have to reinforce uh, that to be here, she uh, has a su survivor to a lot of uh, some traumatic experience. And uh, so um, if you see that and uh, reflect that can help full for for there mm -hmm. thank you francesca thank you
I don't know, any other question, comments? Okay, Francesca, I think we can stop here. Yeah. Thank you very much for the uh, presentation. I think it's been very effective and very, it has involved a lot, the people, which is a good thing. So we, we meet again in, uh, on the 9th of February. Okay. For the, second, for the second session. Thank you very much and bye bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.